Smoke is one of those transfixing things. It's an ordered sort of chaos. Normally wind currents are something that we ignore because we can't see them, but smoke allows us to see the wind currents. In this video, I try and simulate smoke using a physically based particle system. The hope is that by simulating it, we we'll gain some sort of understanding and maybe even more awe of the world around us. What you see on the screen is the end product and I've put a link to the source code down below so if you want you can modify it, try and make it better and I'd love to see what you come up with. I won't be explaining the code at all in this video but I'll be explaining the general concepts of what I'm doing and why. So here I'm just setting up a basic grid with the columns and rows and in that grid I'm basically going to instantiate a bunch of vectors which will act as sort of the wind so I suppose it's going to be random noise based on an x and y offset so that's like a procedurally generated noise and then from that we can decide where the particles go so you can see the first render of that and it's just a bunch of vectors and every time you reload it's going to be a new set randomly generated so now I'm just going to test it out with a smaller scale, so I've changed it to 10 instead of 100 and you can see what it looks like with a grid size of 10. It's a lot more densely packed and gives you some interesting patterns. So I think Perlin noise is going to be the way to go for this. So here we also have a grid size of 50, which is probably a bit, a bit easier on the eye. It's not so <laughs> densely packed and it doesn't take so long to render either. As you saw with the scale of 10, it was pretty slow to load. So this next section, I'm just creating the particle function, which allows me to instantiate as many little particles as I want. So basically it's just a little ball that represents, I suppose you'd say a particle of smoke that you visualize. And I took a lot of this function from the coding train, who has some great videos on P5 and processing and interactive art, I suppose, learning the basics of programming. Um, but that means that this particle model is relatively simple, so it's just got acceleration, velocity, and yeah, position, that's about it. So the other thing I'm just adding here is a Z offset to make the vectors actually move. Forgot to clear the background there. Let's try that one more time. And so here it is working, and you can see it's a bit more like a real wind flow in that the vectors aren't just stationary in one spot always pointing in the same direction so now they move sort of like a real wind I suppose. So the next section was actually instantiating the particles so just creating an array and basically just putting them all in one point initially from the bottom I start them with a vertical velocity because when you have smoke it is warm and usually hot air rises so that's the thought process behind that and basically the way I'm applying forces to the particles is using the field that we generated before the field of vectors that I've now removed so you can actually see the particles but you can see they're moving around left and right based on that field of air that we generated at the start. I've also set the particles to slowly fade away even though this isn't the most realistic in terms of accurately reproducing the physical system of smoke where it sort of dissipates through the rest of the air. I suppose it captures the essence of what it's supposed to look like. And I think at this point, you've sort of created a base platform for the smoke and the rest of the code is just sort of optimizing that to make it look more realistic. I suppose one of the main limiting factors is the actual platform, so P5.js is pretty limited in terms of processing power, what you get out of your browser, so ideally you would have a lot more particles than what I'm creating, it's just that the browser basically would crash and it slows down completely with more particles, so that's sort of the limiting factor why you can't do sort of a real dissipation, you would need a huge amount of particles. And also that would give you a more realistic smoke, um, but 
yeah, I guess that's the main limiting factor. So what you see here is the final result. I was pretty happy with how I got it looking, but there are definitely ways it could be improved. I think if you wanted a more realistic system, it would need to be ported to some other platform that could render it better and allow for more particles. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video.